Hello there, and welcome back to this Projects in Enterprise Java course. So today we're going to be continuing our um, voting system uh, application. And uh, last time we actually had some homework to do. So we needed to actually create an entity class called Candidate. So we already had Citizen created together, but then we also needed to create Candidate. So let's take a look at what you should have done. So first of all, I actually noticed that for some reason, um, back when I was recording um, the uh, um, previous video, as well as when I was just creating the citizen, um, it actually worked without entity, which you know, which was great and all. But um, later on, I, I I took a look, uh, I deleted entity, and I noticed that DDL didn't work. And remember, DDL is data definition language. I'll talk about that in a second. But it didn't work, so it didn't create anything. So if you did have a problem there, maybe you just need to add the most likely you just need to add the entity annotation, and then that would fix things. So in Spring, it's amazing. You could um have something working, um you know, save your code, close it, go to bed, wake up. The next day, changing absolutely nothing, and your code doesn't work anymore. So, you know, that's open source software. Sometimes it does weird things like that, but, you know, it's it's free at least, so that's always great. Anyway, um, um, so the other thing. Uh, last time, I actually, uh, I believe it was in the beginning of the episode, I said um, DDL stands for something. And then <laughs> after that, I accidentally cut out when I actually said what DDL stands for in the clip. And so I, I, I most likely fixed it, but in, a, in case I forgot, in the very rare chance that I forgot, um, DDL stands for Data Definition Language. So, I mean, it's, it's not that difficult to look up, but yeah, it stands for Data Definition Language, just so that you know. All right, anyway, let's take a look at our candidate um, class here. So I put an at table annotation, name candidates, um, at entity annotation as well, just so that it knows the entity. Then our public class candidate at ID, column name ID, private long ID. So just pretty simple stuff, just like we have in citizen. Then candidate name, and then just a public candidate. Remember, we need our constructor as well, so that Hibernate can can um, instantiate this object as well. And then just set name, getters, and setters. Pretty simple stuff. So we can actually now run this, and we can see DDL in action. Let's go ahead and run. Um, let me actually do it manually here. Um, there you go. Uh, run as Java application. All right, let's get a let's give it a second here to run. All right, any day now. Spring Boot man, these load times. And all right, there we go. All right, so it's created a voting system application. Now, if I go ahead and actually open up um, my MySQL console. There we go. Uh, we can actually see here, well, first of all, let me just use voting system. That's the database we're using. All right, and now here we can do uh, show tables. And there we go. So as you can see, we have um, tables in voting system, candidates and citizens. So two tables. Um, we can actually now, um, in our um, application property, you see how um, on DDL auto, we have create drop. So this means that it will actually drop this, all the tables, as soon as we stop the server. So let me, let's just stop it now. All right, there we go. Now let's go to MySQL. Um, and now if we do, let me actually make this a little bit bigger, just so you can see. If we do show tables, you'll see we get empty set. So it actually deletes the tables when we stop the program. And then if we start it up again, we should have them um, back. Let me just, okay, now we have to wait for spring to start again. Let me actually cut here just to uh, where it will actually start up. There we go. That way I just don't waste your time if I just cut to where it starts up. All right, so now let's go to terminal. And now when we do show tables, You'll see how now we get candidates and citizens. So there we go. So that's create drop. Um, we don't want this though. Um, we're actually going to be whoops, no, let's cancel. We're actually going to be just using create. So just put create here. Don't put drop. Um, there are a couple different levels. There's create. There's um, update. Create drop and insert, I believe, and validate. So there are a couple different levels. Um, you know, we're not going to be going over them because you know again, time is limited. But you know, if 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 you want, you can look them up. All right, there we go. So now we have that created. So um, we went over the homework, we have that, you know, all done. Now, we're, what are we going to do? be doing today? Well, today we're actually gonna be getting into Spring Data. So before, all we've really been doing is just working with JPA and Hibernate. Now, we're actually gonna go ahead and get into Spring Data and take a look at how that will work. Um, essentially, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating repositories. So, let's go ahead and actually create a new package here. So we're gonna new, new package, um, and this is gonna be com eduonics. 
electronics dot uh, voting system dot um, let's see entity let's do repositories you know it doesn't matter let's just do repositories as long as you have common Unix voting system it doesn't matter what this here because it'll just search for the repositories in all um, sub packages of this base package common Unix voting system here all right so anyway let's go ahead and finish there we go. All right. So what is a JPA repository generally? So a JPA repository is essentially just something that sort of abstracts us working with the database. So we can actually go ahead and create a new class here. No, it's going to be interface. It's going to be a new interface here. And let's call it um, citizen repo. All right. There we go. Finish. Now make sure you create an interface and not a class. And this interface is going to extend, yeah, extends JPA repository all right there we go and then we it, it can, we can't actually have jpa repository we need to um actually import uh change it to something more specific in a second here but you'll see what i mean and then long citizen okay and now right here we can actually do import jpa repository and then import citizen as well okay so for now our jpa repository actually works i think this might be changed but okay um there we go. And now we actually don't need to do anything else. So actually, no, yeah, we need to do some, some other things. So we, first of all, we need to do at repository. Put this annotation here. There we go. All right. And then also in our main uh, voting system application here, we need to do at enable JPA repositories. Whoops, nope. Um, uh, what's the problem here? There we go. Enable JPA repository. There we go. Um, so now we've imported that, and now in theory we should be able to run this. Let's just let me just check to make sure that everything is working correctly. Uh, maybe we need to specify the base package here because it, maybe maybe we do need to do that. Let me take a look here in a second. We'll see. All right. So here we are. Um, so we don't have a problem with the base packages. We do have a problem though with Citizen repo. I pulled a Bad move. We need to have citizen here and then long, or let's just do integer here, just to clear confusion. Integer here. There we go. Citizen integer. Um, I just need to this net right here needs to be an entity and table. All right. So there we go. So now we, if we save this and run this, we now in theory should have everything working. So let's go ahead and actually run this. Um, any day now. Uh, let me actually cut here as well. And there we go. So now um, we ran our application and it has now started and it has, in theory, we should somewhere here, we should be able to see where it is initializing these JPA repositories. Although, yeah, yeah, I can't really see it here. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't really see it, but we'll, we'll, we'll see them in action pretty soon, though. So let's actually, yeah, let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a create a controller very quickly. So we're going to do new class. No, we're going to create a new package. And we, we, we can actually do right here from this package, we can actually do new package by highlighting it. And yeah, here you can see it's already, you know, inserted the base package for us. And here we can do controller. Okay, so now let's finish. And there we go. So now... We, we should refresh this. Yeah, that's one thing. If you create it like that, then it'll show up inside. There we go. So now we have our controller here. So now we're going to do new class. And this is just going to be, um, let's say citizen controller. No, let's just say, um, what, what, what will this be called? Index. So it's going to be index. Okay. Focus static void main. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't need the main. I don't, I don't know why I put the main there. All right. There we go. And now let's do at controller controller um you know what let's just do rest controller for now just so that we don't have to you know um, create a view or anything like that and now here we're going to do public uh void no public string um insert no let's just say do action okay do action there we go all right so we have a public string do action um we're going to do at um, request mapping and the mapping that we're going to request will be just slash um, let's say do action 
All right, there we go. So now let's import request mapping. This is just annotation that will, um, if we do slash do action, it'll actually take us here. So now in here, we're going to have an auto wired, auto wired, um, and this is going to be a JP, no, I'm sorry, this is going to be a citizen, citizen. I can never get used to typing on these new keyboards. Um, repo, citizen repo. There we go. All right, now let's import citizen repository and let's import the auto wired annotation as well. Okay, and now inside do action, we can do citizen repo dot in, okay, citizen repo dot. Okay, there's quite a bit of things that we can actually do here. So we can actually find all, we can um, get one, we can save, save all, save and flush. There's a lot of different things that we can do here. So this is just, um, things that come along with um, uh, the JPA repository interface that we actually extended. Um, and so um, here we're gonna actually, let's just save here. Um, and inside save, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do user, uh, let's, no, let's just say citizen, um, T equals new citizen, citizen. Um, and then, you know, obviously that. And in the constructor, let's just put, um, what is a constructor? I completely forgot at this point. Um, ID name, okay, ID name. And the ID will be one, name will be uh, Bob. There we go. All right, and now what seems to be the problem? Okay, we just need to cast this to long. There we go, there we go. All right, now let's do citizen repo dot save and we're gonna do T. All right, there we go. And now let's just do return success. All right, there we go. So now let's go ahead and run our spring file. Um, no errors. Okay, there we go. So now let's go ahead and run, not our spring file, our spring project. And we should be able to see our controller be created. Uh, the request being mapped. Right, there we go. So it has now, um, you know, startup spring boot. And we can actually see here how it mapped slash do action onto public Java link string. And you know, it's it, it, it found this controller and it mapped it automatically. There we go. All right, so now let's actually go to a browser and let's type this in. So we actually have, it's all right here. So init Tomcat initializes with the ports 8080. So now we can go to our web browser. And we can now do localhost, local, localhost 8080 slash do action. All right, so, okay, so no default constructor. Okay, I see what happened. So we actually need to have a default constructor for citizen. Completely forgot about that. Um, let's do source, generate constructor using fields. It's these types of things, it's just so many things to uh, do. And we should do the same thing for candidate as well. Um, nope, let's stop that. And let's stop this as well. And I'll start for certification. All right, there we go. So now let's go and get this running. I um, completely forgot that I need a default constructor as well, since I mean it's not always going to initialize it with an ID and a name. Always, it doesn't have an ID and a name to initialize. So that's why we have to have a default constructor as well. All right, and there we go. Okay, so we've now started that. Let's go ahead and go back to our browser, and now we could actually, in theory, there we go. So now we get success, and if we go to our database. Um, we can now do select all from citizens. And there we go. So as you can see, we now have inserted ID one, citizen name Bob, into our database. All right, so well, that is essentially all for today's um, lesson. We did do some pretty cool things. So I personally, I think that the whole idea of JPA repositories and spring data in general is actually really cool. I mean, I really don't like creating, you know, you know, those complex SQL queries. I understand SQL. I know it. Um, I understand how to program in it. I just don't like doing it since it takes up a lot of time and it just doesn't feel very elegant. And the fact that we have this really cool J, um, spring data, you know, um, thing to just do essentially all that for us and us just to work with it in Java code is very cool. Um, you can create queries, custom queries, but even that is a lot, a lot easier. And, um, you know, we're not going to be touching on that in this lesson that much. So yeah, anyway, um, so that's actually how you do that. For homework, your job is to do the same exact thing for um, 
for candidates, for our candidate table as well. And remember to add a default constructor to the candidate table as well, since I've completely forgot about that. All right. So anyway, without further ado then, um, I wish you luck and uh, I'll see you next time. Till soon.